Hello there. Today we are going to talk about some of the most popular substances considered fat burners. While diet and exercise remain the fundamental pillars of achieving our fitness goals, the allure of fat burners as potential allies in this endeavor captures the curiosity of many individuals. The question is, are they really effective and indispensable? Caffeine is by far the most popular substance on today's list. It can influence the increase of energy expenditure by reducing the sensation of fatigue, so you will perform a better workout. Caffeine intensifies thermogenesis. By eating a meal, more of the energy from it will be dissipated as heat. It can also reduce food intake, having the ability to eat without limit. You will satisfy your hunger faster, thus consuming fewer calories. Caffeine enhances lipolysis, that is the release of free fatty acids from adipose tissue. However, it should be noted that the mere release of free fatty acids does not determine that they will be oxidized or colloquially burned. In a study in which participants took caffeine at doses of 3 mg per kilogram of body weight before and after two hours of cycling, they expended about 60 calories more than the group that did not consume it. In addition, when they ate a meal after exercise, the group taking caffeine ate an average of 160 calories less. Of the four most common flavonoids in green tea, epigallocatechin gallate, or EGCG for short, is the most active and most abundant polyphenol. It accounts for about 35% of all catechins. Green tea catechins can inhibit the enzyme that breaks down norepinephrine resulting in increased energy expenditure and increased fat oxidation. There is also reason to believe that green tea catechins may delay gastric emptying. It is worth bearing in mind that doses above 800 mg of EGCG per day may be toxic to the liver. In the study, after 8 weeks of EGCG supplementation with a dose of 100 mg and 85 mg of caffeine, Resting metabolism was about 44 calories higher relative to the placebo group. In another study, where 540 mg of EGCG and 300 mg of caffeine were used, there was an increase over caffeine alone and placebo by about 64 and 80 calories, respectively, within 24 hours. Extracts containing cinephrine are produced from bitter orange fruit. Cinephrine has some structural similarity to ephedrine, which is very familiar to some, but their physiological effects differ significantly. The substance is believed to stimulate beta-3 adrenergic receptors. The ingestion of such an extract causes the release of catecholamines in the vicinity of beta-3 adrenoreceptors located mainly in adipose tissue and the liver. The result is to promote lipolysis and increase thermogenesis, while having minimal effect on blood pressure and heart rate. The most common dosage used in studies was around 50 mg, but there is a lack of evidence to establish a safe value, so caution is advised. In the study, participants were given 50 mg of cinephrine alone. After 75 minutes, resting metabolism increased by 65 calories relative to placebo. It is worth mentioning that the study was sponsored by one of the companies selling supplements. Hot red peppers contain compounds called capsaicinoids. One of them is precisely capsaicin, which is responsible for about 70% of the spiciness of red peppers. It activates TRPV1 receptors, so it can inhibit the formation of fat cells, enhance thermogenesis, and affect the hypothalamus, resulting in better appetite control. The most common doses range from 0.2 to 33 mg in the form of hot bell pepper powder. There are also studies where subjects were given even more than 100 mg of pure capsaicin in capsules, although this can be associated with stomach problems. According to data from one meta-analysis, consuming capsaicin with a meal increased energy expenditure by about 60 calories per day. In two other studies, Participants were given capsaicin in doses of 18 to 30 mg or a placebo. Then, they were allowed to consume a meal to satiety. Those who consumed capsaicin early rate an average of 11% less food.
Chromium is a trace element necessary for proper metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Chromium picolinate is most commonly used in supplements. It is a cofactor necessary for insulin action. In some human studies, chromium supplementation has produced modest improvements in glucose metabolism, insulin sensitivity, or body composition. There are also indications that chromium suppresses appetite and stimulates the body's heat production, thereby increasing energy expenditure, which may contribute to weight loss. The Cochrane Review considered studies with a total of 622 participants. Over a period of 8 to 24 weeks, 346 people took chromium picolinate in doses of 200 to 1,000 mg, while the rest took a placebo. In the chromium supplementation group, participants lost an average of 1 kg more weight. L-carnitine is a non-protein amino acid that is mainly produced in the liver, kidneys, and brain. Its main sources from food are meat, fish, and milk. It plays an important role in fatty acid oxidation, as well as in glucose metabolism, making supplementation a potential aid to weight loss. One of the meta-analysis considered 24 studies with a total of 1,520 participants. After supplementation with L-carnitine, usually in doses of 2,000 mg, over a period of time typically ranging from a few to several weeks, they lost an average of 1.2 kg more weight than the placebo group. Although every single ingredient has been studied in some way, long-term studies are lacking as to the safety and health effects of supplements containing a combination of several ingredients. Contamination of dietary supplements may be a significant problem. One study analyzed 630-hour samples of supplements from 13 different countries. In 15% of them, hormones or prohormones were identified that were not described on the label. Fat burners or pre-workout supplements that have several substances each in their formulation are particularly prone to this. In addition to negative health effects like hepatotoxicity, cardiac and hormonal problems, such contaminants can contribute to the detection of banned substances during anti-doping tests despite the fact that the athlete was not even aware of it. If you nevertheless decide to use such supplements, try to make sure they come from the most reliable source possible. It seems that fat burners, depending on the composition and proportion of the substances in question, can help generate additional energy expenditure of about 100 to 150 calories per day. Remember that diet and physical activity are the basis for weight loss. Supplements of this type can only be a marginal addition. You will not magically lose weight by taking a pill. Fat burners, especially those containing a long list of substances that have little effect, can often cost you a lot of money. In most legal substances, Caffeine plays a significant role. In many cases, staying with just your coffee won't leave you much worse off. If that's not enough for you, you can incorporate natural sources of the substance into your diet, such as green tea, hot spices, or peppers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content on supplements, sports, and fitness.